Hello, Tennessee Voices viewers and listeners. This is David Plazas, the Athenian and Engagement Director for the USA Today Network Tennessee and the Tennessean. I'm very pleased to have as my guest today, Gretchen Funk, who is Chief Program Officer for 50 Forward. Gretchen, how are you doing today? Great, David. Thanks for inviting me to be on the show. Absolutely. And for people who are not familiar with 50 Forward, tell us a little, a little bit about the organization. Sure. Um, 50 Forward is a nonprofit agency in Middle Tennessee. Our mission is to support, champion, and enhance life for older adults. We were established in 1956, so we're celebrating our 66th anniversary, and we provide services really in three ways for older adults. Um, we, off, we have seven lifelong learning centers where older adults can come and participate in a wide range of activities, a lot of fun activities, a lot of educational activities, physical fitness, all kinds of things. Um, we also offer really wonderful and rewarding volunteer opportunities through some formal programs, our foster grandparent program and our senior core friends learning and pairs, retired senior volunteer program. Um, older adults really have that desire to give back and to sort of consolidate their life experiences and do some things that maybe they did not have a chance to do when they were in the work world. So we wanna be sure to offer those opportunities. And then we also have a supportive care division. So we all want to age very independently and be able to do everything for ourselves and afford all the things we need. And sometimes aging journeys um, don't go the way someone expects and more assistance is needed. So we offer care management programs that connect people to resources, uh, a home delivered um, 50 forward fresh meals program, an adult day service program. So lots of different supports. So we like to say there's a place for everyone 50 and over at 50 forward. And you use terminology, just for those who aren't familiar, you use terminology older adults. And I know that growing up, people would say senior citizens or in some cases, retirees, which we know not everybody is in the workforce necessarily. But you talk a little, little bit about that and the evolution of uh, that terminology and, and what is the correct uh, terms to use. Sure. So being in this field, we definitely get to talk with lots of folks who are 50 and over, and things definitely have evolved over time. So 50 Forward actually was established as Senior Citizens, Inc. That was our formal name. And in the early 2000s, we rebranded because there was definitely a feeling that People did not feel like senior citizens did not like that term. So 50 forward really has that energy of taking advantage of the stage of life that moves from 50 and older. Um, so we like the term older adults. We think that it is descriptive and it is something that is not laden with a lot of um, feeling like elderly or frail or things like that might be. So older adults is the term that we choose to use, really having listened to a lot of our constituents around that. I lived in Florida for a long time and uh, I met a lot of folks uh, 65 or older who were very active, you know, whether active in their community, volunteering, still physically very active. Um, but, uh, you know, some of the things that I've been involved in, I've been involved in moderating panels on issues of aging because, you know, some of the issues that, that we have as we get older are very, very real. Um, as, you, as you frame those particular issues, you talked about the services of 50 Forward. What are some of the, uh, the concerns or questions or issues that older adults um, ask you and come to you to make sure that they are, uh, you know, aging in a way that's going to be healthy for them? Right. Yeah, so many things to consider as we age and we're all aging, you know, that's something we want everyone to embrace. I think we live in a very youth oriented culture. That is just the way America is. And so what that can mean for older adults is really a feeling of marginalization. So older adults, when we get to that time, we are the ones who have built what others are benefiting from, but there can really be the feeling that society is not really looking out for the opinions of older adults, the input of older adults any longer. That can lead to feelings of isolation. Um, we really work to help people to decide what they would like their older adulthood to look like and offer them opportunities to live the way that they would like. Um, what does happen, you know, you think about Nashville and really our country and world in general around pressures now around inflation, in Nashville, we are certainly seeing things like housing prices rise so much. We're all feeling the effects of gas prices. 
So we do work with older adults a lot around the fact that they have fixed incomes. And so, you know, there is a little bit of an adjustment that'll happen with Social Security sometimes, but really the earning power, you know, folks like us might be in the middle of our earning years, but as older adults, you have to face issues around finances much differently. So we really help older adults to, to look at lots of different aspects of how they can manage in the society that we have now. And then we are very big advocates around, we should not marginalize older adults. They are part of the fabric of our community and we wanna recognize that and honor that and really learn from that because you know there's so much we can learn from folks who have trod these paths before us. Well, thank you very much for, uh, for that. You know, one of the things that I had when a discussion um, recently at the National Public Library was uh, related to issues of you know, uh, uh, cognitive uh, health as well, which is something that I know oftentimes, uh, you know, children of older adults may have those questions of how do you address situations that may be difficult. And, um, and at the same time, you know, many older adults, you know, my parents included, you know, want to feel a sense of independence that, well, yes, they might not be able to do what they have done when they were younger, uh, they still don't want to feel like they're um, being babied, essentially. So uh, how, how do you uh, talk about that balance uh, in the work that you do? All right, that's a great question. So I am a social worker by training. So in everything that we do at 50 Forward, we try to adopt an empowerment focus. So the idea being that just like you and I would not want someone else making decisions for us, our parents don't want that. And definitely abilities do change over time. It's important to be open-eyed about that, but what we have to do is look at strengths. So we all bring strengths from the moment we're born. You know, Some of us are gonna be great runners. Some of us are gonna be intellectual geniuses. Not everyone usually puts that all together. So when we work with children of older adults, we really look at it from that perspective. And a lot of times children are very loving. They want to protect their older adult loved ones. And there's a place for that. You know, we want to help people understand what their abilities are and keep safe. But really, I, I talk to older adult ch adult children all the time about the fact that this is not your child. You know, so your parent might make a decision that is not the decision you think you would make. But if a court or a doctor has not said they can't make that decision, they're allowed to make it. So in a lot of instances, it calls on families to really dialogue in ways that they have not in the past. And I think what really matters is understanding what someone's values are. So if you can come down to, you know, you know, say your older adult loved one wants to go zip lining, you know, maybe that's totally fine. Maybe you really have a true concern related to frailty. I really suggest that people talk about, you know, what is that experience you're wanting to have? Maybe zip lining is the way to do it. Maybe there's another way to do it that makes more sense. But that importance of always approaching each other with respect and dialoguing and looking at strengths, I think is very important. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, we've come to the midpoint of the discussion where I'd like to ask guests a little bit about how they're keeping healthy and well. Leaders often take care of other people. They uh, often uh, sometimes you know, neglect some of the things that they need to stay well and healthy. So what are you reading, watching, doing to stay healthy and well? Oh, that's such a great question, David. Thank you. And I think we always need reminders about that. So I am very fortunately the parent of four children who are in teenage or young adulthood. So all of them, I think at one point were home with me during the pandemic. And we really had some time to do things that we didn't have time before because there was more available to us outside. So we are a family that loves the outdoors. So that is definitely something that Nashville is very blessed around lots of green spaces. We live near Warner Park, which we have hiked most trails there, which has been great. Um, for me, physical activity is a real release valve. So I belong to a, a fitness center and I am there with one or two of my kids pretty much every day, which is really great. Um, and then I am also a reader. So I love fiction, nonfiction, all kinds of different things. So I'm always looking listening to the podcast and looking for recommendations for good books that really can just be another way to set yourself apart from some of the struggles happening now. 
So yeah, I think it's so important to think about work, which is so important and family, but also what can you do for yourself as an individual? Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, you know that whole notion of connection with nature, connection with family. I think those that, that that's often so important. And I know, having had a recent family reunion with uh, everyone from the age of uh, three to ninety-one, those connections help people feel that sense of intergenerational uh, support and storytelling. And um, you know, as it comes to you, you had mentioned earlier a little bit about isolation and um, how. Uh, older adults can feel isolated, uh, you know, depending on certain circumstances. What are some ways that people can build and feel a sense of community? Right. And it is a challenge, I think. Um, it can be easier to make friends at certain stages of your life. And sometimes that post-retirement older adult stage can be harder. Um, we have seven locations where people can come and engage in all kinds of different activities. And I think what can often be the hardest is taking that first step inside the door. Um, doing anything alone is really hard. So we often suggest, you know, if you are thinking about what your parent might be able to do, we welcome adult children to come to some activities with their parents. So, you know, we have a lot of older adults that come to this area to live closer to their adult children. And if it will be easier for your mom or dad for you to come with them to an activity, that can just break the ice. And then really, they don't want to be there with you. They want to be there with their peers. But just having some somebody to that you know to rely on when you're coming is helpful. One reason why we have such a variety of activities is I think that if you think about something that you've always loved, and maybe you didn't get the chance to do, or maybe you're really expert at, you know, whether that's a craft or cooking or exercise or education, lectures, pick something like that, you know, something that you have a real genuine interest in. So you'll be with other people engaging in that and you'll meet other like-minded people and just being able to focus on both the subject matter and the peer interaction can make the peer part of it a little bit less pressured sometimes, but really taking that first step is very daunting and our staff really want to help people to do that at whatever pace they would like, but it can be challenging. And then there are all the challenges around transportation and other things that might make it hard for folks to get to places, especially in Nashville. So there are a lot of barriers, but really we have so many people that come to our centers that say, oh, I had no idea there were so many nice people here that just wanted to spend time with me and play canasta or do Pilates or any of the different things that people are interested in. So that first step is really what you need to gird your loins, get the courage to do, and then often it's very rewarding. Thank you for that. Uh, we're recording this conversation on June 22nd and just uh, on June 20th, uh, National Public Television released a uh, show called Aging Matters, it's a series of shows, and it featured actually you and me. We were on a round yeah. table talking about aging as it comes to the LGBTQ community. And I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about um, some of the things that you said then and how it relates to um, this particular community. You know, we are certainly doing this during uh, Pride Month, although, you know, people have aging issues and isolation issues all year round. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, thanks, David. That was a great um, chance to work with you on that series also. So when we think 50 Forward really wants to offer a place for every older adult that is interested in engaging with us, and that means folks from all different communities, and sometimes there are communities with whom I think we have to just make extra effort because there has been a history of marginalization, there is some fear around engaging when you don't know what the reception will be to you. Um, and when you think about LGBTQ older adults, they face all the same pressures that other older adults face around isolation, loss that can come with older adulthood, um, fixed finances, all of, and then the, the special consideration of that marginalization. So what 50 Forward really is being intentional about now is listening to that community, because again, I don't want to create something. Um, I want to create the things that people in a certain community are interested in. So we have an advisory group now. We've been working with Nashville Pride over the last number of years, and we've 
brought together what we're calling an elders advisory group. And that group is now taking a look at some recommendations that came out of Nashville Pride's community visioning project. And we are looking at the some of the aims that that group has are to increase visibility for older adults in the LGBT community. Again, as I said, older adults in general can feel invisible in our very youth oriented culture, and that can be the same in the LGBT community. Um, and then also developing specific supports and access to resources for, for folks in that community. So it is really a great honor to walk alongside people who are really the reason why um, progress has been made in equal treatment of all individuals. And now the time is to look at how we can address the needs that come in older adulthood for folks in that community. So I've really been enjoying it a lot, met a lot of terrific people, and I'm looking forward to continuing to plug away and you know create as much possibility for those folks as we can. Thanks for, for sharing that. And, and certainly we'll be putting that link into the uh, podcast notes here, the article for this conversation. Uh, you know, one of the things that uh, I've found also really interesting is the whole notion of um, healthcare when it comes to becoming an older adult. There's certainly different considerations you have to figure. There are different uh, aging related diseases that come with that, whether it's uh, vision or whether it's issues with cancer. And, you know, what are some of the things that older adults, you know, how, how is the best way that you advise them to start thinking about, you know, making that checklist, so to speak, so that they'll be as prepared as possible? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there are some benefits for sure that older adults have in that Medicare becomes available to folks generally at 65, sometimes at 62, which for some people who did not have employer um, related insurance for a period of time, they really look forward to those birthdays so that they can have insurance coverage to address their preventive care needs, especially. And really, I think about myself, yourself, David, it is never too early to start all of those good habits. And we all have struggles with some of them, whether it be physical activity or nutrition. But what we want to start with a base of is really taking care of ourselves in the best way possible. So you think about physical activity, that is super important. Nutrition is very important because our brain, many of us do have concerns around cognitive functioning. When you look at fears that older adults have and probably that we all have, it's around losing our cognitive abilities and being reliant on other people in that way. So really keeping physically active and you can develop a, a good exercise regimen that really will help you be more healthy at any time. You can. I've met pe so many people who start running at 65 or 70 or really begin to incorporate walking in their lives. And that is going to help your brain stay healthy too. You know, sometimes people think the brain is disconnected from the body, but it is not. You know, our blood flow to our brain is super important with remaining healthy. And older adults do have more comorbidities, you know, more other issues that come up as we age, that is just part of the aging process. So developing a relationship with the primary care physician as much as you can. And we are in a great city, you know, for healthcare, there's lots of options here. Um, it takes work to really develop those relationships because the healthcare system has changed. And, you know, that doctor you might've seen for 30 years, you might not have that availability anymore, but you still can develop a relationship and you want to do it while um, you're healthier, you know, wherever you're starting at now, because you'd like a doctor who knows you and will be able to care for you as your needs change. But I am a big fan. You know, I told you exercise is a big thing for me. I think that prevention, that beginning right now to, to control the things we can, because there are issues of heredity and genetics that we really don't have control over. So as much as we can grab control of the things that we do, that's very important. And, you know, we, we have a home delivered meals program called 50 Forward Fresh. And for many years, it looked very Southern. You know, it was a meet and three kind of arrangement. And then about five years ago, we partnered with the National Food Project and they are a, another nonprofit. We love partnering with other nonprofits and they specialize in nutritious, fresh, locally sourced food. So really looking at the fact that every bite you put in your mouth, especially as you get older, is super important to health. So we're looking at that really globally. And I think we all have the power to, to some degree to take control of our health 
the way it is now. And that's not to say some people are not facing extraordinary challenges around health, but I think, again, that empowerment focus is really what we look at. You know, take a look at what you can control and start there. Well, thank you very much, Gretchen. This is Gretchen Funk, Chief Program Officer for 50 Forward. The website is 50forward.org. Uh, and before I let you go, Gretchen, I want to ask you to leave some words of wisdom to our audience to help them through this time. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is such a good question too, David. I don't know how many words of wisdom I have, but I do think about the fact that we are a community. You know, something that we've seen throughout the pandemic is how community is really highlighted and how we missed community when it was really not available to us. Um, I think that there's a lot of kindness in the world and that we want to approach others with kindness. And then I think we can be surprised sometimes that we are met with kindness as well. So I think sometimes you have to make yourself a little bit vulnerable, but then really things can open up for you in ways that you didn't expect. And there can be support out there for you, you giving support, you receiving support in just the ways you might need it. Well, thank you, Gretchen. May you stay healthy and well. And again, I'm so grateful for you appearing on the Tennessee Voices video podcast. Thank you, David. Appreciate it so much.